When I'm asked what it is that I do for a living, one of three things inevitably happens. And it's the third thing that I want to discuss with you because the way that I answer it usually gets me in trouble. Hi everyone, my name is Nancy Morris. I'm the author of Procrastinate Now, Rethinking Time Management and a business psychology specialist. So basically what I do is use the science of how people are thinking and what they're doing at work to help them eliminate the barriers to productivity and profitability in their business um, or in their workday. So I'm sure you can imagine when I'm talking about something like that, one of three things is going to happen. The first one is people just kind of shut down. They just stop talking and it's like, oh my goodness, she's going to start psychoanalyzing me. Not the case, but that's what happens sometimes. The second thing that happens is people will say to me, I think I need to talk to you about improving my productivity or helping me to be a better manager so that I can help my team and, and uh, the rest of the office be more productive, be more profitable, get things done. Great when, I'm, when people are saying that to me, of course. And then the third thing that happens and my response to it that gets me in trouble is this. People will respond, oh my goodness, you need to talk to my boss or you need to talk to the management of this company because, oh my God, they need you. And it's just so funny how many people do this. Uh, I would say that if, say, I'm at a business networking event, of the 10 people who might talk to each other, me, about what it is that I do or whatever, I'm going to have at least four or five of the people say that to me. You need to talk to my boss. You need to talk to the management. You need to go to the C-suite and talk to the big cheeses up, at, up in the big office. And it's really funny to me. Now, of course, we know that over half of the people who quit their job are doing so not because they don't like the work, but because they don't like the boss. We know in North America that at least 70% of the workforce is either somewhat or completely disengaged from work. Um, and some of them, upwards of 10% of any workforce is actively sabotaging. In other words, they're um, not necessarily consciously, but there's a degree of purpose in, you know, gossiping in a negative way, delaying tactics that slow projects down or, or you know, miss deadlines, things like that. So we know that, that there are problems and we know that, you know, sometimes management and bosses um, are, are struggling sometimes to, to um, keep the workforce moving forward in a positive and engaged way. We, we do know that for sure. However, there's something that I want to discuss with you today about the psychology of what's going on in your head that most of us don't know about that can explain why so many people are saying to me, you need to talk to the boss, you need to talk to the management, over and above all those stats that I just rattled off. There's stuff going on inside of your head that's a mistake, that's not true, that is what we call cognitive biases or judgments. Now, of course, your brain needs to categorize information and it needs to do so quickly. So some of these biases show up in a very negative way when you're processing information very quickly. And some of them show up in a negative way simply because you've gotten into the habit of believing everything that your brain is telling you. And it's one of those that I often share in my presentations that people find fascinating that I want to share with you right now. And that's the concept of what we refer to as attribution errors, meaning how we attribute our behavior, how we uh, explain our behavior, and how we explain the behavior of other people. I hear this so often in a working context, the ways people are explaining behavior, and those explanations are in some ways completely wrong. So I want to share with you one of these biases that may be going on in your head because it goes on in most people's heads. And it is unfortunate um, that more people don't know about this information. So do feel free to share this video so that you're helping other people understand a little bit more about what's going on in their head. So about these attribution errors, let me sort of explain this using an example of, of a common example in a working environment. So the, the team has a project or a report that they need to get done by a certain deadline, but they don't get it done. And the boss comes in frustrated and annoyed and um, wants to know what's happened. So there's, say, Bob and there's Jane. 
and they've been working on this project. They're the leads of the project. There might be other people doing it, but they're the leads of the project. Bob's explanation will sound like this, possibly. Well, Jane's just lazy. My computer broke down, but Jane is just lazy. So do you hear what the difference is there? So clearly, what Bob is doing is explaining Jane's behavior based on her disposition, based on her personality or some flaw, some personality flaw. So basically her insides. Whereas for himself, he's explaining things situationally. My computer broke down. So-and-so so didn't pass the information along. I had too many disruptions. This is one of the biggest errors we make when we're in um, at work when we're at work and we're trying to decipher in our own heads what's going on. We will attribute what somebody else is doing to their personality and we will attribute what we're doing to the situations we find ourselves in. Now that doesn't really work, does it? Not really. And the reason why I talk about this and the way that this gets me in trouble is because when people say to me, you know, I, you need to talk to my boss or you need to talk to the management, and I kind of share with them that, hey, hang on here a minute. Maybe something is going on inside of your own head that's not really fair in this situation, is not really helpful. And we talk about this attribution thing. I'm going to get resistance immediately, more often than not, because people don't want to think that that's what they're doing. But then they look at it a little bit and go, well, yeah, maybe I am. What if the explanation for why the boss is struggling to communicate something is because the boss didn't receive training in, in how to do that? Or the boss, the, their boss is not necessarily providing the information that's necessary. Or something else is going on in the boss's life or their mindset or the situation that they're in. It's not necessarily because they're an idiot, because they don't know what they're doing, uh, because they don't care, um, because they're just stupid. You know, all these sorts of things that I hear when people are, are explaining what the boss is doing or what senior management is doing. They're talking about what's going on inside the person. And that's not appropriate. When you bring some attention to the idea that you might be attributing somebody else's behavior incorrectly, and may not be taking into consideration the situation that those people are in as well. And looking at the whole picture, when you're not doing that, you're actually the one that is creating a negative situation. It's not the boss. It's not the management. Yes, I'll go back to the stats. And we do know that, that there are some challenges with perhaps people moving up the corporate ladder that haven't had enough training to help them to do that, for sure. But if you add on top of that, that your only explanation for what somebody is doing, what your boss is doing, is that they are a bad person or, you know, they're an idiot or something like that, you're the one that's actually creating a much more negative situation. So remembering that your brain, while doing its best to process all the information it has to go through in a day, will sometimes make mistakes. And this attribution, there's, there's a few of them that sort of come together that I've explained. These attribution errors um, are really getting in your way. They're getting in your way for being engaged at work, for feeling um, productive, for feeling like you want to be involved and that you're thriving at work. Some of these biases are getting in your way. They are contributing to a negative environment, a negative space at work. So check your own head and see, okay, so I'm saying that the boss is an idiot, but I'm not producing very much because my computer broke down. Okay, now that doesn't work. Think about it more fairly, more broadly. This does get me in trouble when I'm talking about this because I'm asking people to be self-responsible for their opinions about others. A lot of people don't like that, but it is a known cognitive bias that many, many people have. So I invite you to have a look at that. See how it might be impacting your day. See how your response to that bias is impacting your day, your workspace, your working environment. Remember, not everything your brain tells you is true. The more you know about yourself, the more you know about what you're thinking and what you're feeling, 
the more likely it is that you can achieve the success that you want. The fundamental tenet of my business is that the depth of your self-awareness will equal the breadth of your success. Thanks very much for listening. I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email me at nancy at nancymorris.com. Take care.